Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a full collection declutter. This is part one of probably several that I'm going to be doing. I haven't done one of these in many years now, but it's time because I can't even walk in here. There's just so much stuff everywhere. I really need to get organized and just throw out and declutter a bunch of things that I don't need anymore. I have been working on my eyeshadow palettes this year and I have a whole series on my channel, but I wanna take a break from those and do some other things because like I said, there's just stuff everywhere and I wanna be able to get it organized. So today we're gonna to be focusing on foundations, concealers, primers, powders, complexion products in general. So um, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Okay, so first drawer is my foundations, primers, and concealers, and I definitely need to weed these out. I have way too many, I don't use most of them, so. Um, let's go ahead and start here. Okay guys, so here are all my complexion products. I have primers, foundations, and concealers. And this bin here is what was in the drawer that you just saw in my makeup room. Most of these I would say are probably two, maybe three years old. I think a lot of these I'm gonna have to declutter just because of age. And then um, what's in this bin are all of my newer foundations and powders and concealers. And these were everywhere. They were in my makeup room, on the desk, in bins on the floor. They were, some of them were in my bathroom because I've been using them so the goal is to probably get rid of most if not all of what's in this bin and then try to fit some of these into that drawer I also want to thin these out because obviously I don't need this many foundations so I guess let's just start out with this one first so first we have the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Tint I would definitely buy this one again I really like it in the summertime it's a beautiful light coverage similar to a tinted moisturizer but it has this really skin quenching kind of feel it just feels really good on my dry skin so I would definitely buy that one again I also really like the L'Oreal age perfect radiant serum foundation this I originally got in the wrong shade it was a little bit too dark for me so if I bought it again I would probably just try to get a better shade match but this is definitely a few years old at this point so I'm definitely going to declutter this one same thing with the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. I actually really like this one too. It had amazing coverage that I wasn't expecting, but at the same time it has like a tinted moisturizer feel. So this is another really good one that I would definitely repurchase, but I have to get rid of it just because of its age. The Wet n Wild Stick Foundation, the Photo Focus, is my favorite stick foundation. This one is so beautiful on the skin, but again, this one is just way too old. It's probably three or four years old at this point. It reminds me a lot of the Tom Ford Foundation Stick that's 88 dollars so this is a really good one and I would definitely repurchase another one here we have the it cosmetics bye bye foundation this is still in the box I think I got this in a boxy charm or maybe um, fab fit fun box and I hung on to it because I already had one open that I wanted to use up first and I did use it up but then I forgot that I had this it was stuck way back in the drawer so let me see. It says expires three of 2021. Yes. Yeah, so I'm not going to use that anymore, but I do love this formula. I actually think I like it even better than their CC cream. The Maybelline 4-in-1 Perfector. This one actually isn't that old. This one, I think it came out last year. So I think I got it right around the time that it launched. I just don't remember how I felt about it. Let's see. It's kind of like a moussey texture. Yeah, it feels a little bit dry. My skin is really dry, so it's one of those things that feels kind of velvety, almost like a primer. I think I'll go ahead and declutter it. I don't remember really like loving this, so I'll put that in the declutter pile. Then I have a little tube of the It Cosmetics CC Cream in the light shade, which I already have a new one of these, so this one expired 3 of 2022, so I'm going to toss that. Next up, we have the Urban Decay Hydromaniac Foundation. I really actually like this a lot. This was a nice foundation. It felt like a tinted moisturizer, but it had more coverage. And actually, let me see. I think it's this one. Yeah, the Essence Pretty Natural is like an exact dupe of it. I couldn't tell the difference, and I did hear other people saying the same thing. So I think in the future, I would grab another one of the Essence and not the Urban Decay. I think the only negative with the Essence is that I don't think it comes in quite as many shades. But I did feel like the shade range on this one was better than it normally is with Essence. So yeah, I really liked both of these. I've just had them for too long. Next, I have two Maybelline Fit Me concealers. This is one of my favorite drugstore concealers, so I 
I just need to go and get another one because it's definitely a formula that I like to use pretty often. Next we have the CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless Foundation. This is the one that comes in the little jar. I felt like this was okay. It wasn't my favorite to be honest with you so I think I'm going to declutter it. I don't think this one is that old but I just don't remember being wowed by it. My skin doesn't always love a cream foundation so I'm going to put this one over here. The e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. Not a big fan of this one. I much prefer the It Cosmetics. This one just looked a lot more dry on my skin, but I think I'm actually going to hold on to it because I sometimes use this for comparisons. Next we have the L'Oreal Skin Paradise Tinted Water Cream. I felt like this was really similar to the Age Perfect one. I didn't see a whole lot of difference between them, so I think if I were to repurchase one, I would probably just get the Age Perfect one again. Next up we have the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydro Rescue. I really like this one a lot. I tend to use it more in the summertime because it has broad spectrum SPF 45 and it is more of a glowy finish so I have to be in the mood for something that looks a little bit more glowy and dewy on my skin but I would definitely purchase this one again. I really like this formula. The CoverGirl Clean Foundation. I was really wowed by the finish on this. It feels so skin-like and natural. The thing that I didn't like about it is that it has that strong Noxzema smell and I don't mind the actual smell. To me it's nostalgic but for some reason this irritated my skin and it was getting red and bumpy every time I wore this. So unfortunately I can't wear it even though I love the texture. It's so smooth and lightweight. Next we have the Profusion Feel Good Skin. This one, I don't really remember this one that much. For some reason I'm thinking this is kind of like a thicker foundation, almost like a moussey type of a texture. I could be wrong. Let me see. Yeah, it had a lot of coverage and I just felt like it looked heavy and makeup-y on my skin. So I think I'm going to declutter this as well. Next we have the LA Girl Tinted Foundation. I remember liking this. I thought it was a very like buildable kind of natural looking foundation similar to a tinted moisturizer with just a little bit more coverage. I did like it. I don't hear anybody talking about this one though. I don't even know if they still make it but I do know that it's very old so I'm going to put this one over here. Next we have the Jason Wu It's So Soft Foundation. This was another one of those that has the moussey texture almost like a tinted primer. It looked a little bit dry on my skin. I actually prefer his new tinted moisturizer for my dry skin so I think I'm going to declutter this one. Next we have the Maybelline Dream Fresh BB. This is really old. Let me see. It actually expired in February of 2021 so two years ago. This was a nice tinted moisturizer. Nothing to really write home about. I didn't feel like it was super special. Next up we have the Believe Beauty Skin Finish Foundation. I love this stuff so much. I actually have a new box that I've been wearing and this one was the shade soft beige. I actually I think I have the shade cashmere in my newer one and it just works a little bit better for my skin. This one has been hanging around a long time so I think I'm going to declutter it but this is one of my absolute favorite foundations. Speaking of favorites this one from Misha this was the Chobo Yang BB cream. Oh my gosh beautiful foundation. I do have their um, the one in the red tube. The name is escaping me at the moment, but um, I actually liked this one better. This one just for some reason didn't have like the grayish undertone that the regular one has. And I think this was like the anti-aging version of their BB cream. So I just felt like this sat a little bit nicer on my skin than the one in the red tube, but I do like that one. And unfortunately, I think this has been discontinued now. So let me see. This one says 11 18 of 2022. So it really just expired. It's probably fine. I'll usually go past expiration when it comes to powder products, but with liquids, I'm kind of like eh, a little bit wary about it. What is this one? Let's see. This is. Oh, the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation. I completely forgot about this, but from what I do remember about this, I liked the CC cream better. I remember thinking that when I tried it. So I'm going to declutter this one. It looks like there's some separation in the bottle and it says it has a 12 month shelf life. So I know I've had it for longer than that. Here's another e.l.f. Camo CC cream. This one might actually be a better color for me than this one. It looks a little bit lighter. This one was a little bit too deep. So yeah, this one is light 210N and this one is fair 150C. Actually, these have an expiration date on the back too. These both expired last summer in 2022. So all right, maybe I'm not going to keep these. I guess if I need to do a comparison, I'll just get a new one. Moving right along, I'm trying to stick with foundation first and then go to concealer and primer. 
So here we have the Essence My Skin Perfector Tinted Primers. They were okay, but they're not my favorite just because anything that has that moussey kind of velvety feel just ends up looking really dry on me. So I'm gonna put these in the declutter pile. Also, we have the Antidotes Tinted Moisturizer from The Balm. I really like this one a lot. Actually, the new Jason Wu Tinted Moisturizer reminds me a lot of this one but I've had this forever and ever, so I'm gonna declutter that. Do I have any more foundations in here? Let me see. Oh yeah, we have this one from The Ordinary. This is the coverage foundation and it's completely separated. It looks gross. I don't know how old this is, but it's going away. Um, we have the number seven match made foundation drops. I love these. I don't think they make them anymore, unfortunately, but I use these a lot. I used to mix a couple drops in with my primers or with a moisturizer just to give it a little bit of coverage. You could really create your own base product with it. And I loved these. I used mine all the time though. This is actually almost empty. I think that's it for foundation. Oh, here we have a Laneige um, cushion foundation. My gosh, how old is this one? This expired. 1124 of 2022 so I guess not that old but I really love a good cushion foundation this is kind of making me want to head over to yes style and get another one they're great for the summer they're just so quick and easy to use so I might do that I think I have one more foundation I have the Huda Beauty stick foundation this is another stick foundation that I really like the wet and wild and this one are really the only two that I feel like look decent on my skin. I just don't really use stick foundations all that often. So I think if I were to get a new one, I would probably just get the Wet n Wild because I really love that one a lot. This one is good, but if I can get one cheaper, then why not? All right, I think that's all the foundations in here. We might come across something else, but I guess let's move on to primers. So first we have the NYX Marshmallow Primer. I really like this. This one actually isn't that old. I think I could probably hang on to this. I'm just gonna put it over here. It's a nice pore smoothing formula. Also, we have this Beauty Pie All in Wonder Illuminating Primer. This one is a lot like um, the e.l.f. Halo Glow or the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. It's basically the same concept and I use the e.l.f. Halo Glow so often. I feel like I just, how many of these do I need? You know what I mean? So I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. This one was a little bit tinted and I think it was somewhat darker for my skin tone. Yeah, actually it almost seems like it's kind of separating a little bit, like it has some weird crumbly bits in the formula, so eh, I don't know, it might be not good anymore. Next we have, oh, the Joa Blur Activator Mineral Primer. This was such a good primer. This is an exact dupe for the Hourglass one, the white one that is like a really silky feel. I'm trying to think of the name of it now. It'll come to me, but this was an exact dupe for that one, and I'm so bummed that they decided to discontinue these. There was another one too that I have somewhere in here. Um, oh, it's right here. This one, the Glow Activator Radiance Primer. This one is a dupe for the YSL Primer, that one that has the little gold flecks in it. So these two were amazing drugstore primers that, I don't know, I'm really bummed. Joa, why did you discontinue these? I loved them. Oh, actually I put these in the wrong pile. They have to go over here. Next, we have a primer from Lorac. This is the Pro Skin Matte Primer. I forgot all about this. These Lorac primers were really nice. I had another one too, this one, which is the Pro Skin Glass Skin Primer. This one was my favorite. I wasn't as crazy about the matte one for my dry skin, but this one was beautiful. I just had them for so many years. I don't think they're good anymore. They come in really nice, heavy glass bottles. I might want to try the Glass Skin one again. I feel like I have to do a video on Lorac because it's such a slept on brand with so many good products. Next up, we have the City Beauty Skin Perfecting Daily Veil. This is a sunscreen, SPF 39. It's a nice sunscreen. It's a mineral formula. It's kind of expensive, though. I want to say it's around like $40. So there are definitely some cheaper ones out there on the market that I feel like are just as good. Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas is one of my favorite primers, and I think this is one of the only high-end primers I have that I feel like is really worth the price. It's just so pore smoothing. I really love this, but I've had it for a couple of years now. It's really almost gone there's hardly anything left in here but um, it says six months for a shelf life which I didn't even realize it was that short so 
I think I'm going to have to get rid of this one. Next up are some primers from number seven. We have the Lift and Illuminate primer and the Skin Illuminator. I think they got rid of this one, but this one was another really good alternative to like the e.l.f. Halo Glow, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, or like the, um, the one from L'Oreal, the Lumi Glotion. It's really close to that. So I feel like there's just a lot of primers out there on the market that are very similar these days. And the Lift and Luminate one, I don't remember exactly what this was like, but I guess if it wasn't memorable, it's not something that I really need to hold on to. This one is from Huda Beauty. This is actually not that old. I guess it just got stuck in this drawer anyway, but this is the Water Jelly Hydrating Primer. I want to say she came out with this over the summer, so I might hang on to it because it is a newer product. I don't feel like I've used it all that much. Let me just see what it's like. Yeah, I kind of remember this just not doing anything. It just feels like like a light gel. It's hydrating, but I didn't feel like it smoothed my pores or really made any kind of a difference. Maybe I'll just put it to the side and see if maybe one of my sisters wants it or somebody I know. Next, we have the VDL Lumi Layer Primer. This is actually a really nice glowy primer as well. This has an 18 month shelf life. I might have had it for about that long, so it's probably on its last legs. But this is a nice glowy primer. It's kind of, again, like the e.l.f. Halo Glow and the Charlotte Tilbury. But I think this one is a little bit more pearly. It has almost like an opalescent type of a finish to it. It's really, really gorgeous. And I think that kind of sets it apart a little bit from all the other glowy primers on the market. This one's really nice. I might just hang on to this a little while longer. It seems like it's fine. Also, we have the L'Oreal Age Perfect Blurring Face Primer. This one, I don't know, I was kind of a little bit disappointed. I felt like it was slightly blurring. I still like their Studio Secrets primer, the one that's in the little pot. I like it better than this one. So I feel like I don't need this really taking up room because I never reach for it. Here's the YSL primer that the Joa one was a dupe for. They're identical as far as how they feel on your skin. This one has almost like an oil base to it, so it's really beautiful on dry skin. This is another high-end primer that I feel like is kind of worth it, especially now that the Joa one is no longer available. But I've definitely had this for a couple years now. It says it has a 24-month shelf life, which is pretty long, but I don't know. Again, I've probably had it for about that long. I might just keep this one for now and see how it is. Next, we have the Flower Beauty Supernova Celestial Skin Elixir. I really like this one too. This has kind of, again, more of like an oil base. It's great for dry skin. It's like a serum slash oil and it gives your skin a nice glow. But this one is very, very old. I think I need to toss it and probably just grab a new one. I know some people say that this makes their foundation separate on me. It doesn't because my skin is so dry. It just kind of sucks this right up and it really doesn't mess with my foundation that much. So as much as I don't want to, I think I have to declutter this just because of age. Next, we have the No Pore Bloom Primer from Touch and Soul. I really like this one too, a lot actually. And this is just too old, I think, for me to keep. Let's see. It was manufactured in 2018 and it expires in 2021. So this is already done. I'm going to have to get rid of it. That's a pretty long shelf life though. This is another one that I think was a really nice pore smoothing primer. It did a great job. This one isn't that old. This is the Milk Makeup uh, pore eclipse primer yeah the pore eclipse mattifying primer it was okay I didn't feel like it was the best pore smoothing primer it did a decent job but it wasn't my favorite I'm still gonna keep it though just because it's relatively new and I have used this to make comparisons like for dupe videos and things like that the bobby brown vitamin enriched face base this one I don't get the hype. I'm sorry. Like, I know some people love this. If you do and that works for you, that's awesome. I just, for some reason, this just felt like a moisturizer for me. Like, it didn't really do anything as far as making my foundation look smooth or making it last longer. I don't know. It just felt like a moisturizer. I might see if my mom or somebody in my family wants this because, I mean, it's a nice moisturizer. I just don't really use it as a primer. I'm just going to keep it over here. Next, we have the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. I feel like this is super similar to their Power Grip one. It feels almost identical and I've had this one for a couple years now and I have the Power Grip. I have the original one and the niacinamide one now so I feel like it's kind of redundant to have this one too. I did like the smell of it but it's that same kind of jelly grippy texture. This one is another one from Beauty Pie. It's the Wonder Filter Brightening Primer. Again similar to the one that I just decluttered from them except this one I think has a little bit of 
have like a pink tint to it. Let me see. Yeah, it's kind of like a pink pearlized tint. It's nice, but I don't think it makes as much of an impact as like the VDL primer that had that really pearlescent, like beautiful glow. This one just kind of disappears and then you don't really see it anymore. So I think I'm going to declutter this one. Oh, I just found another foundation from The Ordinary. This is their serum foundation. It looks really gross. It's all liquidy. Um, this one, I really couldn't tell the difference between this and the high coverage one. I felt like they both were kind of similar. So this one is going over here. Then I have, let's see. Oh, the Peach C Peach Glow Makeup Base. I really like this one. This one is K-Beauty. Let's see. Oh, it just expired January 21st of 2023. So it's really not that far expired, but I'll probably still get rid of it. I did like this though. It had a nice peachy scent and it had a little bit of a glow to it as well. And then this is the last primer. This is the Milani Glass Skin Primer. This also had like a peachy scent to it and it was really thick and it was supposed to give like a glass skin effect. But to me, it just felt like very greasy and very sticky. I wasn't a big fan of this one. All right, so it looks like I'm left with some concealers. I actually have um, some color correctors. So I have the one from Beauty Pie, the Super Luminous Under Eye Genius Corrector. This one is not that old. It has a 24 month shelf life. I think I got it last year but it's basically identical to the Becca one. This is the closest dupe that I've ever found. So I think I'm gonna just hang on to both of these. I know a lot of people claim that other color correctors are dupes for the Becca, and I've never really found that to be true. I always think the Becca one is the best, but this Beauty Pie one is really, really close, like almost identical. So I think I'm gonna keep both of these. I also have this color corrector from Believe Beauty. I did like it. I don't feel like it was as good as the Becca one. And this is really old at this point. So I'm throwing that out. Also the one from Flower Beauty. I just felt like it was okay. It's not my favorite. It had a little bit of a drier texture and actually this is completely dried out. I can't even pick it up anymore. So that's gonna have to go away. Oh, I actually have a little sample of the Urban Decay All Nighter Primer. I'm gonna just get rid of this. I don't know how old it is. I don't really remember how I felt about it. So, all right, moving on to concealers. We have quite a few <laughs> to get through here. So first I have the Conceal the Deal concealers from Lawless. I actually like these. They sent them to me in PR, so I still have to test them a little bit more. They're not that old. I guess I just must have thrown them on top of the drawer at some point. These are a more full coverage formula that I don't wear all that often, but again, I'm just gonna keep them in case I wanna talk about them in a future video. I also have have the Joa Truly Yours, or I guess it used to be called Truly Yours Dark Circle Concealer. They changed it to the Perfect Complexion Eye Serum Concealer. It's basically the same. I think they just changed the name. I didn't really notice any difference in the formula. This one is super old, so I'm going to toss that one. This one's a little bit newer, and this is one of my favorite concealers, hands down. I don't know if I have an even newer one than this. I'll see if I do in the other bin, but for now, I'll just put this to the side over here. The NYX Bear With Me Concealer is not my favorite. I feel like this one is almost too dewy, and it always creases on me. This one is the shade Vanilla, and it was a little bit too dark for me, so I ended up getting a lighter one. I'm just going to declutter this particular one because, like I said, it's not my favorite, and it's the wrong color. This is a really old Maybelline eraser. I have a new one of this as well, so I'm going to go ahead and toss this. It was probably sitting at the bottom of the bin, and I didn't realize that I had it. These I am so sad to get rid of. These are the Apu Moist Creamy Concealer. These were my favorite Holy Grail concealer for the longest time. I got these on Yes Style, and for some reason, Apu discontinued these. I don't know why. I hung on to them as long as I could because these were so great. If anybody is into K-Beauty and knows of an alternative for this, let me know. The Milani Conceal and Perfect is one of my absolute favorite drugstore concealers, but I think I have a newer one in the other bin, so this one's just really old and I'm going to toss it. The e.l.f. Camo Concealer, definitely not a favorite of mine. This one was really dry and really cakey. I like the hydrating one a little bit better, but even that one I don't tend to use under my eyes. I think it makes a great eyeshadow base, so I usually use it for that, but this one was just way, way too dry, so I'm going to declutter it. I also have the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer. I felt like this one was okay. I haven't used it in a couple of years now, so I probably need to toss it because it's too old. I remember it being kind of a thinner texture. It looked nice under my eyes. I don't feel like it had a lot of coverage, 
It was more of like a natural finish. Next we have the Moira Mega Concealer. This is actually a really good concealer. I have another color of it that I've been using more often. This one is the shade 125 Bisque. I think the other one was a little bit better of a color match for me, which is why I was using that one and not this one. But I really like the formula. It looks really skin-like under your eyes. Next we have the Neutrogena Radiant Cream Concealer. I don't really remember this one, so I guess it didn't make that big of an impression on me. But either way, it's old, so I have to put it over here. The Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer. I had a big moment with this one where I was using it every single day and I loved it so much. And then I didn't use it for a while. And then when I went back to it, I don't know if it just kind of dried out or what happened, but all of a sudden it looked terrible under my eyes. It was really drying. If you guys have dry skin, let me know how you feel about this one because like I said, I loved it and then all of a sudden I didn't. I don't know if like I just got older and maybe my under eyes just didn't really like work well with it anymore or if the formula just dried out. So I don't know, but either way, it's going over here. Next is the Zoeva Authentic Skin Concealer. This one, again, very old, so I'm gonna have to toss it. Their foundation version of this was my holy grail. And now that they're not in Ulta anymore, I don't always remember about this brand. So it's kind of sad. I'll actually have to go on their website and see if they still have the Authentic Skin Foundation because I heard rumors that it was being discontinued. I hope not. Then we have the Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape. This one, I actually liked it better than the original Shape Tape, but I still don't really reach for it all that much just because it's very full coverage and I don't always need that on an everyday basis. Plus this one is is again a few years old. I bought it when it first came out so I should probably get rid of it. The Laura Geller Spackle Concealer is another one that I thought was pretty decent but it's not one that I had out that I was using all the time so I feel like it must not have been super memorable so I think I'm just gonna get rid of that one as well. Here we have the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This was like a little sample that I had for a long time and I really like this formula a lot but I do think there are some drugstore versions that are kind of similar like the Maybelline Fit Me and and the Milani Conceal and Perfect, so I probably don't need this anymore. Also, I have a serum concealer from Trini London. I did a video on this brand, gosh, I think it was at the beginning of last year, maybe? I felt like the products were okay, but kind of overpriced for what they are, so I'm probably gonna declutter this too. Next, we have the Doll 10 TCE Super Coverage Concealer. I love this stuff. This is a great full coverage concealer. I think if I had to use something full coverage instead of Shape Tape or the Lawless one, I think this one just sits the best on my under eyes and it's just more forgiving of fine lines and texture. But this particular one I know was sitting in the drawer for a long time and I I actually have some brand new ones of this like in the box still so I think I'm going to declutter this one and just open up a new one. Next we have the Balms Antidotes Concealer. So this was again something that came in a little pot like a cream formula. I don't know why I buy cream formulas because they just never look good on my skin for some reason. So I'm going to get rid of that one. And then last but not least we have the NYX HD Finishing Powder. I don't really remember what this is like to be honest with you. I think I got this in like a little sample. It seems like a really nice smooth powder. I think I might hang on to it and just try it and see what I think. So anyway, that's that whole bin. We still have one more to go and it's bigger. So I think I'm gonna have to start going through these a little bit quicker or we're gonna be here all day. All right, so I think this one is gonna be a little bit easier because I'm probably gonna keep most of what's in this bin and just declutter a few things here and there. So let's start out with one thing I know I'm decluttering, the Choboyang BB Cream from Misha. This one has the same expiration date as the one that I had in the box. So um, unfortunately, this is the one I was using. It's actually almost gone. You can see it's down to the bottom. And I replaced it with the Perfect Cover. Again, I don't love the Perfect Cover as much as I did this one, but this is still a really nice BB cream and it's one that I wear often. So I'm definitely keeping this. Also, we have the Maybelline Dream Radiant Liquid. I bought this again recently when I was doing a video on like underrated products or products that I forgot about. And I kind of fell in love with this all over again. This is a really nice smoothing foundation. It's great for like more mature and dry skin. So I'm gonna hang on to that. Here we have the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. I did end up splurging on this. I think it was back over the summer. 
and I didn't love it. I like it. It's okay, but I feel like my skin has to be in a perfect state in order for this to look good. I have to be perfectly exfoliated and moisturized, otherwise this can look a little bit kind of textury on my skin, which is weird because a lot of people really rave about this that have dry skin, and I want to say it's like $62 or something, so it was pretty up there, but I just feel like it's okay. I'm still going to keep it for now because I spent a lot of money on it and it's not that old, but there are definitely foundations I I like better than this one. Next up we have the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow. This is one of my favorite L'Oreal foundations. I really do like this one a lot so I'm gonna hang on to it. It's like perfect light to medium, a little bit glowy, really nice. L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable. This one is amazing. I actually just got this one very recently. It's shade number C1.5. I was using C3 and it was a little bit too dark for me. You guys might remember me talking about it in videos. So I ended up getting this one. It's a much better color match for me. So this is brand new and it's one of, if not my number one favorite foundation of the moment. So I'm definitely hanging on to this. Here's the Zoeva Authentic Skin Foundation. As you can see, I I used a lot of this. This was my holy grail number one foundation for so long. It actually has a 12 month shelf life, but I used it way beyond that. I want to say this is maybe like two years old now. It's time to let it go. Unfortunately, I have to go to the Zoeva website and see if they still make it because I love this stuff so much. Next up, we have the Tarte face tape. I bought a little sample of this with a recent Tarte order because I wanted to see what it was like, but I didn't want to invest in the whole bottle. I feel like it's a decent foundation, not my absolute favorite. I have to try it a little bit more and I want to try it all so in the summertime because my skin is not as dry then and we'll see how I like it at that point. So I'm going to hang on to this for now since I just got it maybe like a month ago. Next we have the CoverGirl True Blend Hydrating Foundation. This actually is really nice too. I used this in a recent video again talking about products that nobody talks about and this has a really similar skin-like finish to the CoverGirl Clean Foundation but this has no scent. It doesn't have the Noxzema smell and it doesn't irritate my skin. So this is a really good one if you're looking for a drugstore foundation that has a very skin-like finish. It's beautiful. Next up is the new KVD Good Apple Foundation. Again, I just got this very recently. I'll definitely hang on to it. I feel like it's slightly dry on my dry skin, but if I exfoliate well and moisturize well, it's fine. And it's actually very full coverage. It hides everything. I don't even need concealer and it sets down immediately. So it's really not something that's going to transfer throughout the day. So it's a beautiful formula. I think I might like it even better in the summertime when my skin is more normal than dry. Definitely holding on to that. Then we have the Sephora Best Skin Ever. This is another really beautiful foundation. In a way, it kind of reminds me of the CoverGirl True Blend. It's a lighter coverage foundation, very hydrating for dry skin. It just really looks like your natural skin. It doesn't look makeup-y, so I really like that. Number seven, Lift and Luminate. This is another one of my favorite drugstore foundations, so I will be holding on to this as well. It's also kind of similar to this one. It's a light coverage, could be built up to medium, looks just like skin. It's really hydrating, and it's great for dry, more mature skin types, so... That's a great one. Next we have the Joa Crystal Glow Primedation All-in-One Foundation. So this is supposed to be like foundation, concealer, primer, all-in-one. It is really smoothing on your skin. It has a little bit of that moussey texture, but it's not like the dry kind of moussey feel. So I do like that about it. I like how it sits on the skin. But I also felt like this never really sinks in. It kind of sits on top and it tends to transfer a little bit. So that's what I don't like about it. And I just, I have so many other foundations over here right now. I think I should probably just declutter this one because I really just need to make room. And at some point it's kind of like, how many foundations do I actually need? Let's see, I'm trying to find other foundations. There's a lot of primers and stuff on top. All right, so next we have the House Labs Foundation, the Triclone Skin Tech. I do like this one too. It reminds me a lot of the Believe Beauty Foundation actually, which is only five bucks. So I'm definitely gonna hang on to this one as well. This one is brand new and like I said, I do like it. Next we have the One Size Turn Up the Base BBB Cream and I do like this a lot too. I got this over the summer. It has great coverage. It feels like a BB cream, so it's nice and hydrating and it's also very smoothing on your skin. I actually haven't used this one in a couple months. I want to take it back out and play with it some more. What else do we have? I know I have more foundations in here somewhere. Here we go. Here's uh, the Laura Geller 
Better Than Bare Tinted Moisturizer. I got this one fairly recently, so I want to hang on to it. It actually has SPF 50 plus. I got this over the summer and I was using it a lot because it has that extra sunscreen in it. So it's a nice option if you don't want something as full coverage as like the a Cosmetic CC Cream that has the sunscreen. If you just want something a little bit lighter, it's actually a really nice formula. So I think I'm going to keep this as well. This foundation is from a brand called Hyde and this claimed to be like an invisible foundation, medium to full coverage. I felt like it was okay. I think this was an Amazon exclusive brand. It made a ton of really lofty claims and I just felt like it was okay. It was nothing special. It made my skin look a little bit on the drier side. It might work better for people who are oily or normal. I also had the concealer that went with it as well. And like I said, these were just okay. I never really reached for them that much. So I think I'm going to declutter both of these. Here we have the new Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow. I honestly hate this foundation. I rarely say that but it is so shimmery and so sparkly. It has a ton of mica in the formula. I think it's like the fourth ingredient. So I don't see myself wearing this much in the future, but I am going to keep it because at some point this year, I'm going to be doing videos on products I didn't like, and I'm going to have to put this one in there. So I'm just going to hang on to it for that reason, but I don't really see myself wearing it much. The new NYX Bear With Me Blur Foundation is actually pretty nice. I normally don't get along with these moussey type formulas, but this one was okay. It didn't look super dry on me. And again, I think maybe in the summertime when it's really humid out and I don't want something super dewy. So I'm going to hang on to this for the moment. Next up, we have the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. I really like this. Unfortunately, I got it in the wrong color. It's kind of way too dark for me, but I love the formula so much. It's very expensive, but I feel like it's worth it because it just makes your skin look so smooth. So I'll definitely be keeping that. Here's my newer tube of the It Cosmetic CC Cream. Definitely keeping this. I wear this very regularly, at least once a week. I just love how effortless it is. It covers everything that I want it to cover. I really don't need to use concealer when I wear this. And it's just really hydrating, plus it gives you that extra sunscreen. So definitely put that over there. This is another one from number seven. This is a newer one that they came out with more recently. It's the Restore and Renew Multi Action Serum Foundation. I feel like it's pretty similar to the Lift and Luminate. It might have slightly less coverage. It's a little bit thinner of a formula. I do like them both. I think I tend to reach for the Lift and Luminate a little bit more just because it has slightly more coverage. And this one, I feel like I have to use more concealer with it. But again, I just got it within the past year. So I'm going to hang on to it and try it some more. I also recently just got the Yensa Super Serum Silk Foundation and I really like this a lot as well. It's a Korean formula. It does have a little bit of a grayish tone to it, sort of like the Misha BB Cream, but it just looks so good on my skin. It looks very hydrating. It has a lot of skincare ingredients in it. So even though it has more full coverage, it's not dry looking and I really love that about it. I also got this one from Pure Lease pretty recently. It's the Perfect Glow BB Cream. I do really like this as well. I don't think I like it quite as much as the Misha. This one, I think the Misha is just a little bit more hydrating than the Pure Lease, but I do like it. I actually wore this a lot in the summertime when I first got it, so I think I'm going to hang on to it for the moment. I also love the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. I got this when it first came out a couple months ago, and I really use this one pretty often. It has a beautiful skin-like finish. I would say medium coverage, so it's just like the perfect in-between, and I love that it's not too dewy or too matte. Like I said, it just kind of looks like skin and on my dry skin skin. It doesn't look heavy or makeup-y, so I love this one. Next, we have the Mali Stressless Performance Foundation. I really like this a lot. I got it very recently, and it reminds me so much of the Lisa Eldridge Foundation. In fact, I think the Mali is a better color for me, so I tend to reach for it a lot more than I do the Lisa Eldridge. They're just really close as far as how they feel and how they sit on your skin. The Mali one is also like very smoothing, so if you're looking for a lower cost alternative to the Lisa Eldridge, I think the Mali one is beautiful. Next we have the newer bottle of the Believe Beauty Foundation that I've been wearing a lot. Yeah, it's in the shade Cashmere. So this is another favorite that I use all the time. I think it's super close to the House Labs Foundation and I find myself reaching for this one over that one more often than not. So I love this. Here's another Pure Lease Foundation. This is their Youth Glow CC Cream and I think this one is a little bit thicker than the BB one that I just had. It just has a little slight bit more coverage and I think I, I remember liking the CC Cream a little bit more than the BB. I felt like it was more hydrating. But again, I think both of these are great. I've also been loving the Rare Beauty Positive 
Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. This is another really nice formula. It surprised me at having better coverage than a normal tinted moisturizer would. It's more of a light to medium versus like a sheer to light like most of them. So I love that it has a little bit more coverage, but it still looks just like your natural skin like a tinted moisturizer would. So I use this one pretty often. Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth is another one of my favorite drugstore foundations. This one is so lightweight. It looks really natural on your skin. It's kind of similar to the new True Match, except I think the True Match one is even lighter than this one is, but it's just almost like a serum type texture. It's really nice. I also have the new Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation, which is okay. I felt like it was a little bit glowy. It's not as glowy as the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow, this one. It's not quite this glowy. It's just a little bit glowy. I don't notice it until I go out in the sun and then I see a little bit of sparkle. So it's not like the end of the world. But I think I would still choose the Makeup Forever HD skin over the Makeup by Mario just because I think the Makeup Forever looks a little bit like more skin-like than this one does. It just looks a little bit smoother on my dry skin. So I'm gonna keep this for now because it's a new foundation. I may need to use it to make comparisons, but I don't really wear it all that much. Here's my other L'Oreal True Match. This is the the shade C3 so it's the one that I've been using but it's a little bit dark so I feel like the 1.5 is a better match for me but I'm still going to keep this anyway I might need it in the summertime when I have a little bit more color the new Revlon Illuminance foundation is beautiful it actually reminds me a lot of the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin I have compared these in a dupe video before but the Revlon doesn't have any mica in the formula there's no glow I think the Illuminance just comes from that it's like deeply hydrating it has squalane very high up in the ingredient list and it just feels really nice on my dry skin it has nice medium coverage next i have the super serum foundation from relove this is a brand that's at walmart it's by makeup revolution and this was like a two dollar foundation i wasn't really expecting much from it and the first time i tried it i wasn't a big fan but i think it was the primer that i put it on top of because when i use this alone not on top of primer it actually looks a lot better so I'm still kind of playing with this. I haven't had it for that long, so I'm going to keep it for now. All right, so I'm not seeing any more foundations. There might be a few more under here somewhere, but why don't we just start now with um, primers? So first we have the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I've mentioned this several times in the video already. I use this almost every single day underneath my makeup just because it helps to give my dry skin a little bit more of a glow. So I love this and I'm definitely keeping it. Next up is the Milani Soft Focus Glow Complexion Enhancer. It's actually a very very similar product to the e.l.f. It has a little bit of a glow to it. This one is in a deeper shade. It's bronze glow. They sent it to me in PR. And so this kind of, I keep it because it gives a different effect than the e.l.f. in that this gives my skin a little bit more of like a tanned appearance. So it's almost like a glowy liquid bronzer for me. So I'm going to hang on to this one. I also have the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer and the e.l.f. Power Grip. So these are basically dupes for each other. I think the e.l.f. one is so similar to the Milk Makeup. And I like both of them. I think they both help your foundation to grip really well. I also just got the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer with Niacinamide. It's basically the same exact thing, except they added Niacinamide to the formula, but it feels identical on the skin. It performs the same way. So I think the biggest difference is just that it's nice to have a little bit of skincare benefits in the Niacinamide one. I also just got the new e.l.f. Sun Touchable Woe Glow Primer. This is a sunscreen slash primer, so it has SPF 30, and it really looks a a lot like the halo glow on your skin but it just has the addition of SPF so I think this is a great all-in-one product and as we head into the summer and I'm going outside more I think I'll definitely use this one over the halo glow just so I can have the added extra sun protection here we have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood flawless filter again this is sort of what the elf halo glow is supposed to be duping it's a really glowy primer so I'm gonna hang on to it. I just have the smaller size for now. The Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1 Glow is another very similar product, but I don't love this one as much as the e.l.f. I don't know why. I don't think it's quite as glowy. It doesn't show up as well as the other ones do. So I might actually declutter this one. It's kind of a big bottle. It's taking up space. And again, I sort of feel like how many of these glowy primers do I really need? So I think I'm just gonna put this one in the declutter. Oh, I just found some more foundations under here. We have the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. This is another really nice weightless serum-like texture foundation. It looks great on dry skin, more mature skin. It's kind of similar to something like the L'Oreal True Match or the Maybelline 
dewy and smooth. I really like this one a lot. I actually just heard a rumor that it's being discontinued though. So I don't know. I'm going to keep it for now. I also have the new Juvia's Place I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation. This one is super, super full coverage. So I've only used it a handful of times so far. I think it looks okay on my skin, but as I get older, I tend to not use as many full coverage products. I just don't feel like I need it and I feel like they look a little bit heavy on my skin. So with this one, I just have to use it very, very sparingly. Also, the Ulta Complexion Crush Foundation is another really nice one. This surprised me a lot. It has great coverage. It reminds me somewhat of the Lisa Eldridge Foundation and the Mally one. It almost has a little bit of a gel-like texture. It's very smoothing on your skin. So if you have a more mature skin type with some fine lines or texture, it looks really nice. And it has a lot of hydration as well. So definitely keeping that one. And the Joa Perfect Complexion BB Cream. I like this one so much better than their Primedation that I decluttered over here. I think the BB Cream is just for, at least for my skin type, it's more hydrating and it has a really solid medium coverage. I'd say it's similar to the It Cosmetics CC Cream in that way. So this is a really nice one. And then we have the Tarte Shape Tape Cloud Coverage. This one honestly is not my favorite. I have compared it to the new NYX Blur With Me foundation and I like the NYX one better. This one tends to look a little bit dry on my skin. So I haven't been loving this one in the fall and winter, but I guess I'll keep it and see if maybe I like it a little bit better in the summertime. I just got these two new primers from Flower Beauty. It's the Skin Smoothie Power Matte Primer and the Radiant Glow Primer. So these, again, they're just okay. The Power Matte one isn't necessarily my thing. I try to avoid matte products if I can. And um, the Radiant Glow one, I was hoping for something similar to the e.l.f., but it actually... The glow doesn't really show through foundation like I thought it would. So these are just okay for me, but because I just got them, I might talk about them in upcoming videos, so I'm going to hang on to it just for now. The Rare Beauty Pore Diffusing Primer is really nice. This actually reminds me of the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. It's very, very smoothing on the skin, so I think this is a great alternative to that. Also, a drugstore alternative would be the e.l.f. Poreless Face Primer. I think... It's also very similar to the Rare Beauty. It has that thicker silicone feel and it really fills in pores and fine lines nicely. So I do like both of these. Oops, I just found another foundation. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Buildable Blur CC Cream. This is also a really nice formula, very similar to the It Cosmetics CC Cream. It has a nice comfortable feel on the skin and a solid medium coverage. So I really like this one too. Back to primers, we have the Revlon Prime Plus Perfecting and Smoothing. This is again, kind of similar to the Rare Beauty primer. It has a really nice pore blurring smoothing effect to the skin. The e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, not a huge fan of this. I know people compare it to the Tatcha Silk Canvas, the original Silk Canvas, but I like the Tatcha one better than the e.l.f. I did compare them recently in an e.l.f. dupes video, and I decided that I like the Tatcha one better than the e.l.f. I just think it's a little bit more hydrating and a little bit more pore smoothing. And kind of along the same lines is this one from Lancome. I don't even know that I've ever talked about it on my channel. It's the Priming Serum, and this is also like one of those primer balm type products. It's really, really similar to the e.l.f. I didn't love this one. I felt like it did an okay job at smoothing my skin, but not as much as I wanted it to, especially for the price that it was. So I, so I think I'm actually going to declutter this and see if maybe a family member wants it because I really barely used it at all, but it was just okay. The Wet n Wild Impossible Primer, this one, again, it's okay. Not my favorite. It has a cool texture. It feels very cold when you put it on your skin. When I first tested this on my hand, I thought it was incredibly smoothing, but then all of a sudden, like it looks smoothing at first and then it kind of like settles into the pores and then all of a sudden you can see them again. It's really weird. So I sort of feel like I'm in the minority with this one, but it's not my favorite primer. I might keep it just because sometimes I talk about it on my channel, but I don't really use it all that much. The Nabla Angel Aura Primer is actually beautiful. This is, again, kind of similar to the Elf Halo Glow. But this has a little bit of a different color to it. It has almost like a rosy tone and it has a little more of an oily feel to it. So on my dry skin, it feels really nice and makeup just glides on top of it so smoothly. So I do think it's different from the e.l.f. and the Charlotte Tilbury in that way. I think I'm definitely going to keep it. All right, so moving right along, we have the J.Cat Instant Skin Brightening Tone Up Primer. And it gives your skin a little bit of a white cast, which usually it's not something that I'm looking for. I feel like I'm 
pale enough, so I usually don't like products that give a white cast, so it just, I don't know, it's not really my favorite. It feels kind of like a moisturizer, so it doesn't do anything in the way of like pore smoothing. It doesn't have really like a glow, so I don't really know how much I'm going to use this. I'll probably go ahead and just put it in my declutter pile. I also have the Coats Face Prime and Protect Tinted SPF Sunscreen. I really like the sunscreen a lot. I know I've raved about it on my channel before. It's a mineral sunscreen SPF 40, and it basically is a primer and sunscreen in one. When you go to blend it in, it really just sinks in and disappears, and I don't really notice it darkening my skin at all. But it does such a great job at filling in fine lines and pores. It just makes my skin look really good. So I like to use this a lot, especially because it has the mineral sunscreen in it. It's not as likely to make me break out, so I'm definitely keeping that one. Also, we have the Ciate London Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer. So this one is, again, it's okay. It feels a lot like a moisturizer. It's super hydrating, but these days if I'm going to wear primer and I don't always wear primer every day but if I'm going to I usually want it to do something like either add a glow to my skin or smooth my pores and this one it like I said it just sort of feels like a moisturizer so I think I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one next we have the bliss everdo skin enhancing glowy serum so when I first got this I thought it was a serum but it actually says to use it as the last step of your skincare routine after moisturizer under makeup or over makeup. And it's kind of an interesting product. It comes out of the tube um, kind of like a pink color and it just gives your skin a little bit of a glow. Again, it's super hydrating. It's a similar product to the e.l.f. Halo Glow in that it it's really, really glowy and it definitely peeks through your foundation, but it doesn't have any color to it. The e.l.f. one just has like a slight bit of coverage. This one has no coverage whatsoever. It's just a super glowy kind of glass skin finish. So I actually really do like this. I kind of forgot I had it, so I'm gonna definitely keep this out and play with it some more. Of course, we have the L'Oreal Studio Secrets Magic Perfect perfecting base. This is my favorite primer of all time when it comes to pore smoothing. It just does the best job. It gives my skin a really airbrushed look. I always wear this on camera and just anytime I want my skin to look really perfected, it's such a good primer. I also have this one from L'Oreal. This is brand new. It's the Prime Lab 24 hour pore minimizer and I honestly don't feel like it does a better job at minimizing pores than the little jar. I don't know if this is them trying to like make an updated version of this one, but I have to say this is a little bit smoothing, but not to the extent that this one is. So I am going to keep it just because I just bought it. I may talk about it again on my channel at some point this year, but I really don't reach for it if I'm going to wear primer. It's usually something like this or one of my glowy ones. I also got this recently from Tula. This is the filter primer. It claims to be a blurring moisturizer primer. And this does have a little bit of coverage. I don't find it to be super blurring. I just think it's very hydrating. It's kind of like a tinted moisturizer, basically. So you can wear it alone or as a primer. Again, I think it's fine, but I don't feel like it lives up to the claims. It says that it has a filter-like effect. I don't really see that from this, so it's all right. I'm going to hang on to it because I just got it very recently, and I'll continue to use it, but I'm just not blown away by it either. I also have this one from Pixi. This is the Flawless Beauty Primer, and this one, again, is very similar to the e.l.f. and the Charlotte Tilbury. It has a tiny, tiny bit of coverage, but it's mostly just a ton of glow. It actually has a pink tint to it, which I think is really flattering on my skin tone because I have a pink undertone. So I actually do like this and I do reach for it sometimes. So I'm going to keep it. I also have this primer from Moira. This is the Rose Hydra Enhanced Priming Moisturizer. So it's supposed to be a moisturizer primer in one. To be honest with you, I haven't really used it that much. It really, again, it's like a moisturizer. I don't feel like it smooths out my skin that much. I'm thinking maybe I'll just keep it in the bathroom with my other skincare because I don't really think of this as a primer. It's more like a moisturizer. And then this is the Cali Ray So Blown Primer. This claims to be like a plumping hydrator, pore eraser, oil controller, and makeup replacer. I wouldn't say it's a makeup replacer for me necessarily, but I do think it is a really good pore smoothing primer. It's not as pore smoothing, again, as my L'Oreal one, but it's pretty close. I think it's similar to like the Tatcha one, 
but it's less expensive. So I do really like this one as well. And then I think this is the last primer in the bin. This is the Tarte Face Tape Smoothing Primer. And again, it's like, it's all right. It's not my absolute favorite smoothing primer. I think it's somewhat smoothing, but not as much as the L'Oreal or the Cali Ray or even the Rare Beauty one. But I just got this very recently with an order. It's just a deluxe size. So I think I'll keep it for right now. All right, next let's talk about concealers. So first I have the Catrice True Skin Concealer. This is one of my all-time favorite concealers. It is such a good one if you like full coverage, but you want it to look natural. I wouldn't even say it's full, full coverage. It's maybe like a medium, but you could build it up to full, but it just is so beautiful. It's a good alternative to the Shape Tape if you feel like that one is too dry or like too heavy. This one's a little bit thinner, but it still gives really great coverage and it doesn't settle into fine lines. I also really like the Incognito one from Wet n Wild. This one is really good too. It's a very thin texture. It has great coverage. It looks really nice underneath the eyes. For something with a little bit lighter coverage, this Revlon one is my favorite of the moment. I've been using this constantly. I was using the Catrice one a lot, but once I discovered the Revlon one, this one looks even more natural on my skin. And most days I don't need a lot of coverage. So this one I would say is like a light to medium. You can build it up to medium, but it's also really good at just brightening up your under eye area. And it just looks like your skin. It does doesn't settle into fine lines. It doesn't make your under eyes look textured or makeup-y. And I also have it in a deeper shade as well because it has a little sponge tip applicator. So it's great to use as a contour wand as well. This is probably my number one concealer right now. But another really good one that I really like is from LA Colors. This is, I think, like $2. I got it at Dollar General and I wasn't expecting much out of it. But this is an awesome one. It really is similar to the Revlon in that it just looks so natural, very skin-like, and it doesn't make my under eye area look older. It doesn't settle into fine lines. So this is another really good one. Same thing with the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Concealer. This is brand new and I'm super impressed with this so far. I haven't been trying it for a while, but this also has more coverage, I would say, than the Revlon one. It's bordering on full coverage, which I wasn't expecting from a serum concealer, but it's not as thin as I was thinking it was going to be. Like their Get Real Serum Foundation is very watery, but this one is a little bit thicker, but it also looks incredibly natural under your eyes at the same time. So this is another really good one. I did mention the Joa concealer already. I decluttered my older ones. So this is just the newer one that I have. And this is in the shade 10, very fair with cool undertones. And again, I really love this one. It's similar to the Revlon, I would say. This new one from CoverGirl is not my favorite. I actually like the formula. Sorry, it just keeps wanting to focus on the bin behind us. But um, I like the formula of this. It's a nice serum texture and it's, it's very, very light coverage. I just don't like the wand. It's this metal or ceramic um, applicator, but it doesn't really distribute a lot of product. You have to keep going back in over and over again to pick up more. I do like how silky it is. It's very, very sheer though. It's not gonna give you a ton of coverage. So again, I'm gonna keep it because it's a newer formula. I may talk about it on my channel at some point. This is the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. This one is really nice. I've had this for a while now. I don't know if it's still good. Actually, it says it has a six month shelf life, so probably not. I've had it for well over a year now, but I do really like this formula. However, I feel like the Catrice one is similar. It has the same amount of coverage and it looks just as good underneath the eyes. And also the Catrice one has a good staying power, just like the Dior. So I think it's probably time to declutter this one. I know I mentioned that I had some more of the Doll 10 TCE concealer. So I have these two ready to go. Um, I have it in fair light and light. I think the fair light one is actually a better color for me than light. So I might just give away the light one to somebody I know that has a little bit of a deeper complexion than me. But this is a really good full, full coverage concealer. It's more full coverage than the Catrice one. It's similar to Tarte Shape Tape, maybe even more full coverage than that. You only need the tiniest little drop and it covers everything, but still somehow manages to look natural. So this is a really good one. Next up, we have the Sephora Best Skin Ever Concealer. This claims to be full coverage. I didn't feel like it necessarily was. I know the foundation definitely isn't. I haven't played with this that much though. I got it somewhat recently, so I'm gonna have to just form a better opinion of it, but I've only tried it once or twice. I'm just gonna keep it for now. This is the Moira Mega Concealer. This is a waterproof full coverage formula. Again, I wouldn't say it's full, full coverage. It's similar to the Catrice one, and I like it. It looks really natural under my eyes, 
list too. So I'll hang on to this one for right now. Here's the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. Again, not my favorite. I know I mentioned I use this a lot just as an eyeshadow primer because it works really well for that, but I don't love it under my eyes as a concealer. So I'll keep it for now, but I probably won't repurchase this one. I also recently got this Too Faced one. This is the Born This Way Ethereal Light Illuminating and Smoothing Concealer. This one was okay. I felt like it looked slightly dry under my eyes, so I wasn't super impressed with it, but I'll have to just try it out again in the warmer weather and see if maybe when my skin isn't as dry, if it works a little bit better. I also have the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. This is another really nice one. It has decent coverage. It looks good on your under eye area. I really have no complaints about this one. I feel like it's long lasting too. So I do reach for this one occasionally. Then I just have two more in here. I have a little mini of Tarte Shape Tape, which I got very recently. And I like to keep this one if I ever have to do a comparison with a drugstore formula. And I have the Thrive Cosmetics Buildable Blur HD Creaseless Concealer. Again, it's not one that I reach for every day. I'm not really sure why. I guess it just doesn't look quite as flawless under my eyes as like the Revlon Concealer or the Catrice True Skin, but I do grab it every once in a while. And then moving on, I just have some powders. I have a few powder foundations. I have this one from CoverGirl, which I did an entire video on. I love this one so much. It claims to be a wrinkle blurring powder and it really truly is so smooth on your skin, especially if you use it with the puff that comes with it. I feel like that's the best way to apply it. I haven't tried using it with a brush, but I just feel like it's not gonna give the same effect or the same type of coverage. So this one is amazing. Next up we have the Laura Geller Baked Balance and Brighten Color Correcting Foundation. I have it in the shade medium, which I think is a little bit too deep for me. I probably should have gone a little lighter, but this is a really nice foundation. It's really natural looking on the skin. If you want more coverage, you can also wet it because it's a baked formula. So you can just take a wet sponge and kind of turn it into a cream. I usually just use it as a powder if I want light coverage. So I'm definitely going to keep this one, even though it's a little bit too deep for me in the summertime, it works out pretty well. I also recently got this one from Essence. It's the 16 hour cover and last powder foundation. I'm not a big fan of this one. I might declutter this only because I just like the CoverGirl one better. And this one had a weird smell to it and it made my skin look a little bit dry. So it just wasn't for me. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this over here. I also have a powder foundation from Tarte. This one is fairly new. This is the Amazonian Clay Blurring Powder Foundation and I have it in light medium neutral. Again, I still like the CoverGirl one better than this one. It just, I don't know, it doesn't have quite the coverage that the CoverGirl one has and it can look a little bit dry. Like it can cling to dry patches a little. So for me, this one didn't work out so well, but I'm I'm going to keep it just because it's new. I got it recently and I'm going to try it in the summer when my skin is a little bit more normal. So first I have the Kosas Cloud Set Powder and this is in the shade Breezy. I do like this one. This is a really nice light almost invisible powder. It has a little tiny hint of coverage, so I like it for that. I haven't had this for that long, so I'm going to hang on to it. Also, the Moira Set and Correct powders. These are probably my favorite finishing powders of all time. They're so invisible. If you're somebody who has dry skin and you don't like powder, try this because it literally looks like nothing. It just blends into your skin and it smooths out your pores. It takes down shine but it never looks like a powder. These are absolutely incredible. If you're interested, I do also have a coupon code for Moira. It's 15% off. Um, I have the shades 200 and 100, which to be honest with you, they kind of look the same to me. Even though these claim to be correcting powders, I don't really get much color out of either one of them. They basically look translucent, but I really don't use this one. This one is shade 300. It's a little bit deeper. So this one is actually meant for uh, medium to deep skin tones, but like, again, it doesn't really show up as a color. If I put it on my skin, it's basically translucent, so I probably could use it, but I have the other two, so just to save room, I'll probably just declutter this one. Also, Moira makes a loose version of the Set and Correct powder. So this, it's called the same thing, Set and Correct Loose Setting Powder, and I have it in shade six, medium neutralizer. And it's basically an exact dupe for the Givenchy one. This is the Prism Libre in the shade four. It basically has the same colors in it. 
it feels exactly identical. They both have that really invisible texture that doesn't show up on your skin. So even if you're dry, like it doesn't cling to dry patches, it doesn't look dry or powdery. These are both amazing, but this one costs a lot less and it's just as good of a formula. I'm going to keep them both because I talk about them once in a while, compare the two and do videos. So I'll just hang on to those. We also have the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. I bought this recently because everybody was raving about how great it is. It is a really, really nice powder. It's very seamless again very skin like and it doesn't look powdery so it's a great option for dry skin I personally like the new Milani conceal and perfect blur out powder slightly more it's even more smooth and refined than the Maybelline one and I didn't even think you could get much better than this one but it's amazing I have seen some negative reviews from people saying that this oxidizes I didn't notice that on me I just felt like it looks pretty much invisible I would say next to the Moira one, this is my absolute favorite setting powder that I reach for the most. I also have this one from Flower Beauty. This is the Jet Set Invisible Powder Spray. So this is a pretty interesting product. I haven't seen many like it. It's a setting powder, but you just kind of spray it on and it sets your foundation down. It mattifies everything. I don't use it very often because having dry skin, I usually want my skin to have a little bit of dewiness. But if I'm wearing a foundation that's particularly dewy or sticky and I want to put powder products on top of it, then I will try to mat it down a little. And this is a really nice product for doing that because, again, it's just invisible and not powdery on your skin. I also have this powder from Sigma. This is the Beaming Glow Illuminating Powder. Actually, this should probably go with my highlighters because I generally don't use illuminating powders all over my face. It actually reminds me of one that I have from Laura Mercier, but it just gives the most gorgeous glow. So sometimes I'll use this as a loose highlighter. It's really, really stunning. I do have a coupon code for Sigma too, so I'll leave that down below in case you're interested. I have another foundation. This is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue, and this is a really nice foundation. I got this recently because I owned this a long time ago. I kind of forgot about it. And then I saw someone else on YouTube talking about how much they love it and I wanted to try it again. So I saw this mini at Sephora and I thought I would test it out. It is just a really nice tinted moisturizer. I feel like it's somewhat similar to the Rare Beauty one that I like. So, I mean, I just got this, so I guess I'll just hang on to it for now. And then last but not least, we have the Mali Face Defender. So this is such a unique product and there have been other products out there that have tried to copy this and they just were not the same so if you're somebody who doesn't like powder this is an alternative to powder basically so it's actually a setting balm but it doesn't have a sticky or balm like feel it almost has a dry putty like texture but it's completely clear it's completely translucent and you just put it on like an area of your skin that's shiny like I don't know I'll just put it like here and it just completely takes down shine and mattifies and smooths your pores exactly like a powder, but it's not a powder. So it's great for people with dry skin or if you have more mature skin and you don't like the look of powder. You can also use this under foundation as primer. So it's an incredible product. I absolutely love this. I've repurchased it countless times over the years. So, so anyway, this is the pile that I'm keeping over here. And this is the bucket that I'm getting rid of, which honestly, it's almost full. So I'm hoping that now I have room in the drawer for all of this stuff. So I'm going to put it all back and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so here's the final drawer. It feels so good to be able to get all of these products into this one drawer instead of them being all scattered around this room and in the bathroom. It's good to just have it all in one place. So here I have um, all my powders and setting products in the back. Then these three sections here are primers. I kept the ones that I use the most often in this one right here. Um, and I also forgot, I just found this when I was cleaning up a little bit, um, the L'Oreal Prime Lab Redness Reducing Primer. This one I use a lot because I usually have redness around my nose. And this really helps to cancel it out so my foundation doesn't have to be super full coverage. And then with foundation, I put the ones that I don't wear as often back here. And then the ones that are in bottles are in these two sections. And these are ones that I wear more frequently frequently and also this is um, all the foundations I have that just come in tubes so I just kind of wanted to put all of those together like tinted moisturizers BB creams stuff like that and then over here I have my concealers and color correctors and actually same thing when I was cleaning I found these little elf color correctors I didn't talk about those before so I have a redness reducing one and one to brighten up your eyes and I love both of these as well so anyway guys that's the declutter I'm definitely going to be doing more of these because I have to go through all of my other face products like blushes highlighters and bronzers 
I still have to finish my eyeshadow palette collection, but I do have a lot of those, which I started. I think there are already four parts to that one. So I'll go ahead and just link my declutter series up on the screen. If you feel like watching more, if you have some time, that would be awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care guys. Bye.